In this video, we will talk about enantiomers and diastereomers. So enantiomers and diastereomers are, are both stereoisomers. Let's, let's get that point clear at the beginning. And, and stereoisomers are just basically um, compounds that have identical connectivities, but they differ in spatial arrangement. So in other words, the, the, the connectivities in terms of their bonds are, are all connected to the same atoms. But, but when, you're, when you're viewing this molecule or compound from a three-dimensional perspective, uh, you'll find that some of the atoms are oriented differently in space. So, so I want to make that point clear. And, and I've highlighted isomers and all of these stereoisomers um, simply to, to demonstrate that, that we are working with isomers and that the molecular formulas and, and, and all of these examples should be the same. And if they are not, then, then we can discount that we are working with a, with a, uh, a diastereomer or an enantiomer. So, so before I get into more examples on that, I want to point out that, that a stereoisomer has, has two different paths it can take. And, and one path it can take is, is basically I can, I can have an example where I have a molecule that has a non-superimposable mirror image to itself. And, and in that instance, I'll be working with a, an enantiomer. And so let me just circle this. Now, if I take the other path, I can have a situation where I have a, a stereoisomer or stereoisomers that are not mirror images to each other. And, and, the, and in that instance, we will be working with diastereomers. So, so I want to make that point clear. And, and earlier I mentioned that, you know, we should have the same molecular formula. And if we don't, then, then we are not going to be working with enantiomers and diastereomers. And, and I composed a quick example of that, of that right here. And, and basically you can see that, that everything is the same except for in this, in this molecule, we can see that we are working with an alcohol. And over here, you can see that we are working with an amine group. And so as a result of that, um, regardless of whether we compose an R or S configuration, say for example R over here and, and, and S over there, well, well that doesn't really matter because we really can't compare the two anyway because they are not isomers, meaning that they do not have the same molecular formula and, and therefore we will not be working with a diastereomer and, or an enantiomer in that situation. And, and I, I feel the need to point this out because I, I think a lot of people make that mistake. They, they just take two molecules, they compare them to one another, especially if there's only one point of difference, such as in this case where we have an alcohol and over here we have an amine. But, but basically I just don't want you to make that mistake and so, so try to, try to you know, pay special attention to the molecular formula when you are making these uh, comparisons to one another. So, so anyway, let's just move forward now and, and talk about enantiomers. So with an enantiomer, Keep in mind that we must have a chiral carbon, or, or we could have chiral carbons too for that matter. But, but basically when you have a chiral carbon, you, you basically have a carbon that, uh, that has four different substituents attached to it. And as a result of that, you are able to make assignments. And, and from those assignments, you are able to name the carbon as either having a, an R configuration or an S configuration. And, and so I want to make that point clear as well. So, so now let's just move forward and, and show some examples of enantiomers. And in order to do that, I want to show that, for example, let's see here, I can have an R configuration on one side. And this is going to depict a mirror, by the way. So, so on the left side, I'll have an R configuration, and on the right side, I will have an S configuration. And as a result of that, I will be working with enantiomers because they are opposite configurations to one another. And, and I'm going to keep doing this moving forward, by the way. I'm, just, I'm simply going to, to demonstrate um, R and S in comparison to one another. And I think that's going to be an efficient way to teach this because, um, you know, if I were to draw, say, you know, 10 molecules, for example. Well, well those 10 molecules might, will, will take, for one, it'll, it'll take a long time to draw all of them, but for two, I mean, we're really showing the same thing. We're just showing R compared to S. And, and so I think this will be a more effective method of, of teaching this. And, and by the way, since I, since I am going to be doing it that way, um, I want to mention that I am making the assumption that I am not working with a meso compound or molecule. Because remember, with a meso compound, um, if you have basically if you have an internal mirror plane of symmetry your compound even even though you have chiral carbons or, or a chiral carbon um, even though you have those well well that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a, a chiral compound or a chiral molecule as a whole because if you have an internal mirror plane of symmetry well well now you're not going to 
you know, you're not going to be able to demonstrate a um, uh, a mirror or a um, an enantiomer by which you have something that is able to be non-superimposable on itself because with meso compounds those molecules are superimposable on themselves so so anyway I don't want to get you know go too far off into talking about meso compounds but but I am making the assumption that that we are not working with a meso compound to to demonstrate these examples as I move forward so so now that I've mentioned that let's just show some more examples of this but but basically I can show something like this too where I have R compared to S, and that would be an enantiomer as well, and I can show RR in comparison to SS. And notice too, by the way, that all I'm doing is I'm just simply showing the opposite configuration. So if I have R on this side, on the left hand side, well I'll have S on the right hand side. And likewise if I have R on this side again, the opposite configuration will simply be an S, and and as you can so I mean as you can see we can just we can do this all day we can show let's see here R R S R and we can make a comparison to let's see here S S. R and S. So so it doesn't matter. I mean it's we can we can add a hundred of these and, and it's it's still gonna be just as easy. And and so for that reason, um, uh, that's why I didn't want to demonstrate this with, with molecules because all we're all we're really doing is just comparing R R to S. So so anyway, now that we've demonstrated the enantiomers, let's show some examples of diastereomers. So let's see here. And by the way, if we just go back into our into our definition, just as a as a quick refresher, but basically, diastereomers are when you when you're comparing two different stereoisomers to one another, and they are not mirror images. So so that is how they differ from enantiomers. Because with enantiomers, remember this R was a stereoisomer, and this S was a stereoisomer, and when we compared them to one another, we were able to demonstrate non-superimposable mirror images in comparison. And, and so with diastereomers, they are not going to be super, um, or, or basically they are not going to be mirror images of each other. And, and we'll be able to demonstrate that with some visuals here. So for example, if I have R, S, well, we know the enantiomer to this is going to be SR. So I'll just write that up here really fast, and, and we're not going to be using that. But, but basically the diastereomers can be RR or can also be SS. And so you can see that we have we have two different possibilities here, but, but basically that's how you determine a diastereomer. And and to show an additional example of that, we can show something like this where we have R, S, R. And this one's going to be kind of fun. We should have uh, quite a few possibilities in this instance. So so the enantiomer to this should be S R S. So so we know that we are not going to be using that as our diastereomer. However, if we if we think about all of the possibilities, we can show SSS, R R R. Let's see here, S S R R R S S R R and R S S. So, so as you can see, these are all diastereomers, and let me just write that down really fast. And this one was an enantiomer. So let's just demonstrate one last example of this by using Fisher projections and try to figure out whether we are comparing enantiomers or diastereomers to one another. So let's see here. There's one Fisher projection. Might as well make my, my wedges and my dashes. 
Remember the wedges indicate that things are coming toward you. And the dashes indicate that things are pointing away. Do the same thing over here. So now let's just uh, add some substitu substituents to this. So let's see here. Show an alcohol. Show two methyl groups. And then on this side, we can show alcohol. So now let's just make some assignments to this to uh, determine our our RNS configurations. So let's see here. We have, and by the way, we'll start off with this carbon right here. But we have one, two, three, and four. So we move in this direction. Lowest priority group is pointing away, so there is no need to invert. We end up with an R, with an R configuration. Now we'll go to this carbon. In which case we have one, two, three, and four. S configuration. And by the way, if uh, if this is new to you, how I'm making these assignments, I, I have another vid video on R and S configurations as well, and and how to determine those. So let's see. Let's move over to this carbon. We have one, two, three, four. Clockwise direction. Our configuration, no need to invert. Lowest priority group is pointing away. Now we move to this carbon. So we move in this direction. Our configuration again. And so if we compare these two molecules to one another, what we'll find is that we have an RS configuration relative to an RR configuration. So that is going to be a diastereomer. Now let's just make sure our molecular formulas are the same because as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you know, that's going to be a, a crucial element to all of this because, you know, I mean we're comparing stereoisomers to one another, hence isomer. So let's see here. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens. Circle that one again. And then over here we have two methyl groups two methyls. Looks like we have an alcohol, alcohol, and one chlorine, one chlorine. So it checks out, and indeed we are working with a diastereomer.